How's it going everyone? My name is Bradley and welcome to the final episode of Trick and Treat with Hikari. Hey y'all! We are going to get the last of the endings, which is Lillian's route and the true ending, I believe it's called, since it's called Trick and Treat, the final ending. So, Isn't there a third ending we're missing? Yeah, we'll get to that as well. So, uh... this one. Without hesitation, I point towards there again. Only to realize with the surprise that it is the white cat. Blah blah blah. No. Uh, uh, pick her up, maybe? Escape. Escape from the cat. Yeah. It is best for me to escape this cursed cat. I made a mistake by bringing her with me. The cat only brings problems. I don't feel very sure about that voice, but perhaps it can guide me to the exit. It sounds kind, and I certainly don't want to stay with this animal. With that in mind, I try to move forward, but the cat blocks my path. No matter how hard I try, she moves faster than me, showing me her claws and fangs furiously, as if preparing to attack me. My instinct tells me that it would be better to not go one step further. I don't know what she can do, but that cat is dangerous. Suddenly, the, beca the cat begins to meow thunderously, almost making me deaf. <laughs> My heart skips a beat with each of them, as if I were hearing a wild beast roar ferociously. This kitty's got claws. My breathing becomes agitated. Those meows are wrecking my nerves. I have no other way out. I don't care about the voice anymore. All I want to lose is the cat from sight. So not wasting a sycamore, I start to run in the opposite direction begging that she was not following me. I run through the forest, not looking back, forgetting about everything except my desire to get away from her. I have no idea where I'm going, or how long it's been since I started to run, but I don't care. My lungs burn and my heart beats anxiously, begging me for a rest, but I cannot give myself that luxury. Stronger than the pleas of the rest from my body are the pleas from my soul crying, terrified, Asking me to continue running until I can't anymore. Sometimes I hear the strange voice again, sounding in my head. But whenever it happens, the echo of the cat's meows are heard throughout the forest, freezing my blood again and reminding me that I cannot stop. I feel sorry for the voice, but I can't answer your call. I'm so desperate that more than three times I've fallen flat to the ground, and many more times hurt with the branches of trees. But that pain does not stop me. I'll keep running until my legs can't go one single step further. 2.57 a.m. Just checking something. I don't know how long I've been running, but for some minutes I haven't heard any of them. Neither the voice nor the meows. Much to my relief. Finally, I stop. Resting my hands on my knees and feeling on the verge of fainting. I breathe using my mouth, to trying to fill my lungs with as much air as I can. While my legs hurt as if they have been hammered mercilessly. But this pain does not bother me because I finally feel safe. Suddenly, I look up only to find something that fills me with joy. I see the exit of the forest. I did it! I escaped this demonic forest. I didn't become an utter victim of the disappearances. Just thinking about it almost brings tears to my eyes. Axel! Axel! Suddenly, I hear someone calling my name. But it isn't any strange voice, as the voices of my friends who are looking for me. Knows. Hey, over here, and etc. Inside the forest, couldn't find the exit, that's strange. Blah blah, we'll cover the woods, couldn't find you anywhere. Didn't find me in the forest. I didn't want to go back in. I've seen that tomorrow. Okay, no. 
It was a good thing as they were all safe. Yes, but that was somewhat terrifying. After that roar, I didn't know what was going to become of us. I was about to tell them about all I had to go through, but just before saying a word, I changed my mind. They didn't need to know. The important thing is that we, we all escaped and nobody got hurt. Well, I think we've had enough of this test of courage. We sh should better get back home. I said, looking horribly tired. Without hesitation, both of them responded with a nod. After that, everyone started to walk back home without looking back. Despite everything, I had to say that our main goal was fulfilled. We had a memorable night. The legend is true. Now I know it. Finn. We escaped the cat. What ending was that? Surviving the cat's attack. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so now we're actually gonna go for Lillian's routes. So what do we have to do first? Uh, da -da -da -da, load. What was the last save file you have on this? Uh, the one where I decided to. The... Yeah, where I decided to kiss Ashley or not. Designed to help her defeat yeah, Lillian. Think... You think that's yes, it? I think that's. Yeah. Okay. Um... Then should I? I can't trust her. I'm sorry. I can't believe in what you say. I said suddenly, with a voice more serious than before. It's no joke. I feel bad for saying it, but it's how I really feel. You attacked me and my friends. Why should I help you? The face Ashley makes says it all. She simply cannot believe it. But, but... She murmured with disbelief reflecting on her red eyes. She seemed hurt, but there is no turning back. I'm sorry, but this is my decision. I said putting an end to the conversation. Goodbye. I then added son to walk back to the cabin. Okay, go. Just go back to her. Ashley suddenly said furious. The truth is I can't blame her. I hope you don't regret it later. I do. Not saying more, I distance myself from her one step at a time. Before losing sight of her, I take a look back. She's on her knees facing towards the ground. I feel sorry for her, but I've already made my decision. I wonder how Lillian is doing. I hope she is well, since we were attacked by Ashley for no reason. I doubt I felt something when no doubt I felt something when I kissed her. But perhaps there is more behind it than what I heard from Ashley. I should go talk to her. 3.35 a.m. Finally, I'm here. Again, the image of the old cabin stands in front of my eyes. I sighed, doubting for a second, but I have to be strong. Arming myself with courage, I go towards the cabin and prepare to knock on the door. But just at that moment, someone or something stops me. Axel. Before I knew it, Lillian opens the door and gives me a warm hug, excited to see me back. It seems that she heard my footsteps as I approached. Or perhaps she has some power of observation. Either way, it doesn't matter. She's here and seems happy to see me. Brave night, you are back safe and sound. Lillian said while looking at me in the eyes with tenderness, then giving me a sweet smile. It seems impossible she could do something as evil as Ashley said. Yes, it seems so. I remember without much emotion. I was more confused. No matter what I do, something always seemed to be wrong. Don't worry about me. I'm much better now thanks to the help you gave me. Lily ends with a sweet smile. However, now I should reward you for coming back to my side. The last thing she says calls my attention instantly. Reward me? I repeated inquisitively. What kind of reward can she be talking about? Of course, since you managed to escape from the claws of that horrible Ashley, and you've shown loyalty to me. This is why you will have your reward. After saying that, Lillian's eyes turn naughty. 
She looks into my eyes with a playful smile. Suddenly, she approaches her face close to mine. I can smell her feminine scent before there wasn't any since she had yet to truly materialize. Close your eyes and you receive your reward. Pauline says those words very gently. There's something charming in her voice. I cannot resist her. Before I knew it, I had closed my eyes as she asked me. And at that moment, her lips and mine come together again. Only this time is much more intense. I can feel her heat and softness in more detail. Our kiss is much more passionate than the one before. Without any shame, we kissed overflowing with lust and desire. Suddenly, I feel my strength leave my body. She holds me tight so that I don't fall down as if I were a toy. After kissing her from the bottom of my heart, I am left without any energy. My skin is pale and my body feels cold, heavy as if made of lead. Don't worry, I won't take your life. Lillian said full of pride. Besides, I have more than enough energy to accomplish my vengeance. Suddenly she smiles. It is a malicious smile that I never would have wanted to see. Wait, did she say revenge? My mind barely works now. Everything looks fuzzy. Everything is so confusing. I don't even seem to mind hearing that, or imagine how cruel it could be. Definitely, there's something broken in me. You've shown loyalty to me, so you'll be my partner in this eternity. That kiss was our contract. You shall be my servant and will obey me and please me in everything that I need. After saying that, Lillian suddenly begins to laugh, an eerie laughter filled with joy. <laughs> yes, my lady. Was all I could say without showing any rejection, without any resistance. My body and my mind had ceased to be under my control. It's my first slave. How pleasing. I never thought that I would find a human so stupid, but at the same time noble as you. I think I was lucky. Lillian's look at that time reflects a seductive malice. They are cruel blue eyes that love to be like that. But there is a problem. A slave without power is not useful. She pauses and then snaps her fingers. I know. I will share some of my power with you. Count yourself lucky. After saying that, she laughs playfully. <laughs> then she sits her gaze on me. I suddenly feel that my strength is returning to normal. She lets go of me and I have no problem standing on my own. But soon I realize that I was wrong. I feel even stronger than before. Great. Now just one more thing left to do. Lillian says she looks at me with a mischievous smile. Surely she wasn't thinking anything good. But before she could say more, something interrupts her. Ashley appeared in front of the two. Thankfully you're still alive. Come with me. We can still beat her. Ashley shouted, sounding almost desperate. I hear it, but even if I want it, my body does not respond. I am completely still, as if I were a statue. You idiot! What are you waiting for? Flee! As she said, seeing my lack of reaction, sounding even more desperate. You, the only idiot is you. Don't you realize? It was not necessary to kill him to carry out my plan. Lillian responded, overflowing with pride and confidence. The look in her blue eyes said it all. She already had the victory in her hands. As she freezes for a second from the impression, she was stunned. Wait, what are you trying to say? She asked full with disbelief that was visible in plain sight. Lillian smiles. Simple. He gave me all his energy, and as a reward, I allowed him to be my slave. You lie! 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 
Ashley doesn't take the news well. She screams furiously while looking with hatred at Lillian. The enmity of the two must be doing something deeper than what I imagined. No, it's the truth. Was the simple response of Lillian, displaying a confident smile that was almost insulting to see. Ashley bites her lower lip with anguish. Her eyes at the time become sharp. I didn't expect to have to use this method, but there is no other option. Suddenly, Ashley's nails grow long and sharp as knives. She points to her own jaguar. Stop her. Wait, she has a jaguar? Jugular. It's what? a vein in your neck. Oh. <laughs> what a Lillian for hesitation. Oh, Lillian's nails grow strong. I don't know anymore. It was Ashley's nails that grew strong. At that moment, I feel my body disintegrate, and before I knew it, I was right next to Ashley. And less than a blink, I had changed positions. By pure instinct, I grab her arms and just stop Ashley. No, let go of me, you giant idiot! I have to do this or you don't know what will happen! She tries to escape, but now I have more strength. Superhuman strength. I will not allow you to do that. Lillian said, ending with a short <laughs> laugh. Then she smiles full of confidence, partially hiding her lips behind one hand with elegance. Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! Let! Asha repeats the same thing over and over, but little by little, she becomes quieter, accepting her defeat. When she lowers her head in silence, it appears something was stealing her power. It's my fault. That something is no other than me. You will be my main guest, Ashley, of how I carry out my revenge. You don't have to worry about those idiot humans. Besides, deep down, you wanted it too. Ashley silently accepts her fate. It breaks my heart to see it like that. It really does. But no matter how hard I try, my body doesn't listen to me. Not even a single muscle. Tonight, I will feel the reason of my existence. <laughs> How beautiful. After so long waiting for this day, finally they will know my revenge. Finally. <laughs> you make a really good evil laugh, my lady. Thank you. Lillian looks very different from when I first saw her. She now can't stop laughing with euph euphoria, right? Every single one of her laughs leaves a scar in my heart. Now I understand my mistake. Now that it is too late. My body has become her slave. I am just a puppet now. Waiting for my lady to pull my strings. That night, I was a witness to the most heinous acts someone could commit. Murderous. Murderers, torture, screams, blood, tears. I saw all of this, more than once each. Family, friends, and neighbors were murdered, and I couldn't do anything about it. No, that isn't right. My own hands were the ones who took their lives. I still remember their faces in agony, silently begging me to stop. But no matter how much I wanted to, my will is controlled by someone else. I am just a puppet now, waiting for my mistress to pull my strings. An eternal life filled with misery is all that awaits me now. In my despair, I managed to break the control of Lillian, but just for long enough to make a single move. Surrounded by death and fire, I shout a loud and heartbreaking scream to the sky. My voice echoes all over. Carrying a message of pain for which there are no words. My revenge in this town is fulfilled. 
However, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Lillian pauses. She beholds the destruction of the town with satisfaction, then turns to look at me with a smile. We are leaving. Yes, my princess. You are so cute. Seeing her smile makes my heart pound. Although I'm just a puppet now, I still keep a fragment of my conscience. But it's already corrupted. Her revenge and smile inspire love instead of hatred. Because my life and world are only Lillian now. We won't be always together. For all eternity. Of course. I will always protect you. Help you. And love you for all eternity. I will do everything so that my lady, my Princess Lillian, can be happy. I wouldn't expect any less from you, my loyal servant. You truly are my knight in silver armor. Town of Ebbington, Oxfordshire Country, November 12th. It's still going? I feel like it should have ended there. It's been over one week since the discovery of a total slaughter in the small town. Police have still no clues about what happened here. The evidence is scattered everywhere, explained the chief of police, William Lane. It's as if we're trying to find a needle in a haystack. An explanation for why everyone suddenly decided to kill their neighbors and commit suicide later. But sadly, there isn't one. The case of the needle does not exist. So far, everything seems to the point that it was a pagan ritual. This town years ago was related to witches and other supernatural legends, but there is no doubt that these deaths were the result of nothing but human actions. Anyway, we will continue with the investigations. The chief sounded confused, but in reality, all the country is. Literally, in all a single night, in a single night, all the inhabitants at Abington, Abingdon, died. By the hand of their own neighbors, these were not just murders. Many were tortured too. According to the investigations, more than 1,000 people were burned alive in this incident. Jesus. Well, there's Lillian's ending. She mind controls us and then takes over or destroys the world. I swear, she reminds me from Mary from Ebe. She reminds me of Mary from Ebe. Except this is just way more intense. Mary tried to kill Ebe and Gary with a palette knife. But this, this is just intense. I thought Mary just wanted to kill Gary. That too. I can't skip this. Now that that's over, time for the final ending. The name of the game, Trick and Treat. I've only been recording for nearly 25 minutes. 